Ты не в рот, блядь. Ой, ой, ой! Thousands of shipping containers that carry stuff like your morning coffee, new tires, or the latest phone move around the world every day. They're really important for getting things where they need to go. But when something goes wrong, it can cause big problems. On June 27, 2020, at a port in Africa, a worker was supposed to move one of these boxes from one place to another. You'll see a machine called a spreader that's supposed to grab the box from the top at all four corners. The person operating the crane tries to attach it to the box, which seems a bit tricky. Eventually, it looks like it's attached but only grabs the box from one end. No one notices the box is hanging wrong, not even the worker standing nearby. Thankfully, he sees it in time and gets out of the way before the box falls. The driver of a truck also backs up just in time to avoid the box crashing down on him. It could have been a disaster if he hadn't moved. It's not clear whose fault it was. The person operating the crane or maybe something was wrong with the spreader. Watching big ships get launched is usually pretty exciting, but not all ship launches are the same everywhere. In some parts of the world, they use a unique method to get these big boats into the water. They put large air-filled cylinders under the ships, which then roll into the water on these cylinders. But there's a problem with this technique. The ships don't have much support, so they can end up tipping over. That's exactly what happened in Jakarta, Indonesia. They were trying to launch a Coast Guard ship by rolling it on these inflatable cylinders. But suddenly, the ship began to lean to one side. As it moved backwards, the lean got worse, until the ship eventually tipped over on its side, with its front end still on the land. Even though it looked like things were moving slowly, it was actually a very risky situation because there were sailors on the ship as it was being launched. When the ship started tilting to its left side, some sailors managed to hang on, but others weren't so lucky and ended up falling into the water. After the ship stopped moving, the remaining men had to jump off. A few people got minor injuries from the whole ordeal, but the ship was damaged to the point where it had to be scrapped after the accident. The port of Valencia ranks as the fifth busiest port in Europe. It handles more than 80 million tons of cargo annually, transporting a wide range of items like phones, cars, spices, plastics, chemicals, and plenty of wine. On September 11, 2020, an incident occurred where a container filled with red wine started leaking. What might have seemed like a scene from an ancient Egyptian curse was really just a costly mistake. It's unclear what led to the leak in the wine container. The real puzzle might be why it was filled with wine to begin with. Usually, wine bottles are packed into cases, loaded onto pallets, and then placed into the container. It's possible there was a huge plastic bladder filled with wine inside the container, and something that punctured the container might have also torn the bladder. If that happened, it's a sign that the method of shipping wine needs to be re-evaluated. It's super frustrating to miss an exit, and on long roads like the G25 in China, it can be even more so. On April 8, 2018, a white sedan zoomed past their exit and, instead of heading to the next one, did something really dangerous and thoughtless. After missing the exit, the sedan stopped right in the middle of the highway and cut across another lane. This sudden move forced an oncoming truck to swerve and overturn, but the sedan driver didn't stop to check on the truck driver, they just drove off towards their missed exit. This action led to another truck losing control and flipping over, almost hitting the sedan. Yet again, the sedan driver showed no concern and continued on, leaving behind a mess. Unbeknownst to them, fuel started leaking from the second truck, posing a risk of a fire on the highway. Miraculously, both truck drivers were unharmed, 
Although the first truck lost all its cargo, the cameras failed to capture any details about the sedan or its driver. Let's hope they face the consequences of their actions somehow. You might think it's difficult for two huge ships to collide in the vast open sea, but these barge captains would tell you otherwise. On Christmas Day of 2016, two barges were on their way to port and ended up heading straight for each other. This led to a foolish standoff on the open sea, much like a game of chicken. After they hit, the person filming went over to check out the damage. You can see a lot of water being pumped out from the ship's side. If the ship loses too much of this ballast water, it could get too top-heavy and might tip over. We're not sure exactly where this happened, but it looks like there was a lot of space to avoid each other. It seems like both captains messed up. They probably both saw the other one coming, but thought the other would steer away. By the time they realized they were both not moving, it was too late to avoid the crash. The good news is, this happened close to a port, so rescue boats got to them quickly. Whether these captains are still out there driving boats, well, that's hard to say. Teton Pass is a high, twisty road that cuts through the mountains in southwestern Wyoming. The route has long stretches that go downhill as it winds through the mountains, making it a risky spot for brake failure. Because of this, a lot of money is put into creating escape routes for vehicles that lose control. On July 13, 2021, the Wyoming Department of Transportation did a test on one of their newest designs for these emergency ramps. A truck weighing 58,000 pounds was driven down the pass at high speed, luckily with a skilled stunt driver at the controls. Arnold Korb Mocker, the stunt driver, carried out the test flawlessly. The innovative design effectively halted the truck without causing significant damage or harming the driver. Typically, these escape routes use long pits filled with sand to stop out-of-control trucks. However, these stops can be abrupt and forceful, potentially damaging the vehicle and injuring the driver. This novel approach, officially known as a truck arrester, employs steel nets to capture and gradually slow down the truck. It's somewhat reminiscent of Spider-Man halting a runaway train. These nets are connected to containers embedded in the concrete barriers. Within these containers are rolls of steel netting designed to deploy sequentially. As one roll is expended, the next one takes over, ensuring a continuous slowing force. Santa Marta, located on the northern coast of Colombia, is a historic city founded in 1525 by the Spanish conqueror Rodrigo de Bastidas, making it one of the earliest Spanish settlements in the New World. The city's port has been active since its establishment. However, on November 16, 2013, a ship entering the port experienced significant difficulties. Due to a minor mistake, it caused considerable damage. The incident occurred when a bulk carrier was trying to dock at around 6.30 in the morning. The captain misjudged his maneuver, trapping a smaller boat between his vessel and a container ship already moored at the port. As the situation deteriorated, the bulk carrier drifted into the dock and almost crushed a smaller pilot boat. Port workers rushed to check for injuries and moved the smaller boats out of harm's way. Despite their efforts, the large ship continued its turn and completed a full 180 degrees. While the smaller boats managed to get away, one was so severely damaged that it sank. Overhead footage later captured two small boats equipped with tires along their sides, nudging the larger vessel away from further trouble. These tires allow the smaller boats to push against bigger ships without getting damaged. Everything around us is constantly under the pressure of the atmosphere. At sea level, there's enough air around and inside us to balance this pressure. This equilibrium prevents things from collapsing or bursting open. Our bodies are designed to handle changes in external pressure, such as when we climb to high altitudes. However, if you remove all the air from inside an object, creating a vacuum, even materials as strong as steel can collapse under atmospheric pressure, similar to how a soda can might crush. The pressure causing this collapse is only 14.7 pounds per square inch or PSI, which is the same pressure the Earth's atmosphere exerts on us at sea level. 
a video demonstrating this principle gained attention again after the Ocean Gate incident. Near the Titanic wreck, the water pressure reaches about 6,000 psi, which is 408 times the average air pressure at sea level. At such extreme pressures, the Titan submarine was destroyed almost instantaneously. Offshore wind turbines are impressive examples of engineering, but they need regular upkeep to function optimally. On April 10, 2018, a supply ship named Voss Stone was working near a turbine that was still being built. They were installing cables when the weather suddenly worsened. The ship was ordered to return before the sea became too rough, but it was already too late. The Voss Stone was seen struggling in the turbulent sea. It appears they were near the Arona offshore wind farm in the Baltic Sea. Watch the crane as the ship tries to leave the storm behind. It hits the wind turbine, ruining the crane and badly damaging the yellow platform. We can't be sure of the language the captain was using, but when someone says project is finished, it almost sounds like a botched sabotage effort. For some unclear reason, the captain decided it was the right moment to test the ship's emergency controls. Something malfunctioned, leading to a complete loss of control. Driven by the wind and waves, the Voss stone was pushed towards the turbine. Control was regained too late to avoid the collision, raising suspicions that it might have been deliberate after all. This incident of driving mishap was recorded by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation's cameras set up along Interstate 43 near Milwaukee. It shows a driver moving erratically down the left lane, proving that light poles can indeed snap like twigs, similar to what you might see in a video game when hit by trucks. Watch the red pickup as it suddenly swerves left, climbs up the center divider, and easily knocks down a light pole, almost hitting vehicles coming from the opposite direction. The truck strikes another pole before it finally leaves the divider and comes to a stop. Fortunately, the second pole fell into the left lane without hitting any cars. The incident causes a traffic jam as curious drivers exit their vehicles to look at the aftermath. A pedestrian crosses the road to check on the pickup's driver, while the driver of a white car checks for any damage to their vehicle. The pickup driver manages to exit his vehicle through the window, stands in the lane, and surveys the chaos he's created. Reports later stated that the police arrested him following a field sobriety test. Remarkably, no one was injured during this real-life, reckless episode reminiscent of a drunken spree in a video game. Port Lincoln, located in South Australia, is famous for its seafood and stunning beaches. It's a place that draws visitors globally for its unique experiences like shark diving, swimming with sea lions, and watching ships in Boston Bay. However, on October 8, 2010, those watching the ships got more excitement than expected. Just before 3 p.m., a Liberian cargo ship, the Grand Rodosi, slammed into an Australian fishing vessel, the Apollo. CCTV caught the moment the Rodosi cut the Apollo in half. From the video, everything looks calm on the water, but it's easy to imagine the chaos on shore. The Grand Rodosi approaches from the right side so slowly, it could be a joke. Then, in a tense moment, it hits the Apollo, squashing it against the dock. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau reported that the Apollo went under soon after, while the Rodosi had only slight damage to its front end and sides. The Singapore Strait is a stretch of water that lies between Singapore's main city and its southern islands. It runs for 65 miles, linking the Malacca Strait to the west with the South China Sea to the east. The Nippon Foundation reports that almost half of the world's sea trade and a third of its crude oil are transported through this strait every year. Given the sheer volume of global trade that depends on this narrow passage, you can picture the potential chaos that nearly ensued in 2013 when two ships almost collided there. A Turkish cargo ship named Bex Halil executed a move on a smaller vessel that resembled a police chase technique, causing the smaller boat to nearly spin out of control while Bex sounded its horn loudly. This event surely left someone named Chris with an unforgettable tale. Following the incident, Singapore's Coast Guard rushed to the scene to save the crew from the smaller, now unnamed boat, which began to sink. 
Fortunately, no injuries were reported by the Coast Guard. The danger of ship collisions isn't the only concern in the Singapore Strait. Piracy has also been increasing, with 34 recorded incidents in 2020 and a jump to 49 in 2021. The small town of Hornslet in Denmark benefits greatly from the wind farm located just outside of it. The strong winds from the Gulf Stream generate plenty of energy, enough to supply power to the town and the surrounding regions. However, there's a safety mechanism in place for when the winds get too strong. The wind turbines have brake systems designed to prevent them from spinning too fast. On February 22, 2009, a combination of extremely strong winds and a brake system failure resulted in a memorable moment. Some of the local residents noticed one of the turbines spinning much faster than normal and managed to capture the unusual event on video. Yes. As the story goes, the brake mechanism of the wind turbine had become worn out, and there was an unusual noise coming from the main gear. Representatives from Vestas, the company responsible for the turbine, arrived that morning to repair the brakes. However, addressing the noise would have required a more thorough and costly examination. In an effort to keep the turbine operational, they proceeded with the brake repair and restarted the system. As the wind intensified, the turbine started to rotate faster than it was supposed to. Eventually, a loud noise, likely a gear failure, was heard from within the system, prompting an evacuation. Spectators watched from a safe distance as the turbine spun uncontrollably until it ultimately exploded, sending pieces flying between 200 and 500 meters from the site. Fortunately, no one was injured in the incident. It's speculated that the cost of replacing the entire turbine was probably higher than what it would have been to fix the gear issue initially. Crashing into a naval battleship might seem easy because it's such a large target, yet avoiding one in the vastness of the open sea should be equally straightforward. However, when the USS Fletcher found itself in trouble on the water, the USS Downs came to the rescue. The plan was for the Downs to tow the Fletcher to Anchorage for repairs. Unfortunately, they misjudged the distance during the attempt to link the two ships, getting too close for comfort. Alarms sounded on both the USS Downs and the USS Fletcher as the Downs approached too closely, setting off a tense moment for the crew members on board. They prepared for a collision as the sides of the two ships scraped against each other. Fortunately, the Downs managed to get past the Fletcher without causing significant damage. Despite the potential for a serious incident, it seems the situation was less severe than it could have been, though it was likely a nerve-wracking experience. After the incident, the mood on the Downs lightened, with crew members keeping spirits high. They playfully blamed the Fletcher for the mishap and shared their stories about the event in interviews, maintaining a sense of humor about the situation. Shipping ports use several key machines to operate smoothly every day, and one essential piece of equipment is the reach stacker. This machine is essentially a blend of a crane and a forklift. Designed to stack shipping containers both vertically and in rows several containers deep. Imagine it as a sort of fishing rod capable of lifting 4,000 pound containers. On March 10, 2019, an operator of a reach stacker was tasked with what seemed like a straightforward job to remove a container from the top row without needing to maneuver over any others. Initially, the operator successfully attached to the container without issue. However, trouble began when he attempted to move it. It appeared that the container's right end lifted first, disrupting the weight balance and causing the reach stacker to become top-heavy and tip over sideways. 
while the container remarkably ended up standing upright. From a closer look, the magnitude of the mishap was evident. Fortunately, the driver managed to get out of the cab and away from the scene before the situation worsened. He was incredibly fortunate that his mistake did not set off a disastrous chain reaction. The Kiel Canal, an important waterway in northern Germany, links the North Sea with the Baltic Sea. Located around 75 miles south of Denmark's border, it facilitates the passage of approximately 32,000 ships annually. On August 24, 2011, a situation unfolded in the canal involving two ships that seemed to be in a hurry. Initially, it might look like we're viewing a recording of another recording, but it's actually live footage. As the two ships approached each other, the camera person dashed to the deck just in time to capture the smaller ship making a sharp turn to the right, barely avoiding a head-on collision with the large container ship by its front end. However, the turn was too sharp, and the back end of the smaller ship ended up hitting the larger one. This smaller ship, a 226-foot tanker named Janna, managed to bounce off the larger vessel and continue on its way. Subsequent footage from the container ship, a 456-foot vessel named Hemkepa, showed bent pieces of red metal near its cargo hold. Contrary to initial thoughts of impatience causing the crash, it was revealed by the shipwreck log that Jana had suffered a rudder failure, which led to the collision with Hemkepa. Fortunately, there were no injuries reported from either ship, though the Jana was transporting 1,000 tons of biodiesel, highlighting the potential for a more disastrous outcome if the collision had been more severe. Georgetown, the eighth largest city in Malaysia, is home to around 160,000 people. At some point, almost everyone in the city has crossed the famous Weld Key Bridge, a pedestrian bridge over 45 years old that provided access to the ferry over a highway. Sadly, the bridge didn't make it past 2020. On February 5th, a truck traveling down Weld Key Road tried to go under the bridge with a crane on its bed, misjudging the bridge's height. Although the truck's cab made it through, the crane did not. As the truck neared the bridge, it looked like it would pass underneath without issue, but the crane's last part snagged on the bridge. The truck stopped abruptly, and the bridge was nearly brought down. Fortunately, no one was on the bridge at the time. The damage to the bridge was so severe that repair was impossible without closing Well Key Road, a major artery too vital to be shut down. The decision was made to demolish the bridge within the next 24 hours instead. The city calculated the destruction's cost and billed the trucking company responsible. Erected in 1975, this 16-foot-high bridge was Penang's first simplifying and securing ferry access. Its loss meant people had to revert to using a regular crosswalk, increasing congestion on the already busy main road. Hallover Inlet in Miami, Florida, is well known for being a particularly treacherous stretch of water. Numerous boaters have experienced damage to their vessels or faced dangerous situations there, largely due to the inlet's challenging conditions. The difficulty arises because the tide pulls the water out while the wind drives it back in, creating especially turbulent waters at certain times. However, it's not just the water that poses a risk. Even before getting onto the water, some boaters find themselves in trouble. An example of this is a couple who were attempting to reverse their yacht into the marina and almost ended up losing their truck in the process. Oh no. Keep it running. Hey, tell them to keep it running. Hey, keep it running. Keep it running. Do not turn it off. Luckily, they managed to push the truck enough for it to grip the ground and drive out of the water. Although the interior ended up waterlogged, the owner was relieved that the truck wasn't completely ruined. Our cameraman advised the owner not to shut off the engine, and here's why. If the exhaust pipe is underwater, there's a risk that water could flow back into the engine and flood it. However, if the engine keeps running, the expulsion of gas helps prevent water from entering. If water does make its way into the engine, it can fill the cylinders, leading to a stall, a situation known as a hydraulic lock. Attempting to restart the car after this can severely damage the engine. In the end, dealing with water damage to the car's interior is far less costly than having to replace the entire engine. Bitumen is a very thick form of petroleum that can vary in appearance from a sticky black liquid to a solid form, depending on its composition. In the United States, it's commonly referred to as asphalt. Interestingly, about 70% of the bitumen produced is used for road construction. 
to transport vitamin across the country, oil tankers are still used. However, there's a catch. To keep the bitumen or asphalt in a liquid state for transportation, it must be heated to approximately 248 degrees Fahrenheit. When bitumen comes into contact with water, a dangerous reaction known as a boilover can occur, which is a violent eruption of the bitumen out of its container due to the rapid expansion of steam. This reaction can be both fascinating and hazardous to observe. Boilovers happen when hot asphalt meets water that's pooled in a tanker. The water instantly transforms into steam, expanding its volume by roughly 1,600 times. This rapid expansion forces more of the hot asphalt out in a domino effect, creating significant and often messy eruptions. Such incidents can result in sizable and chaotic spills, demonstrating the need for careful handling and precautions when transporting and working with hot asphalt. The explosive spewing occurs because the steam and asphalt mix together, forming a hot foam. This process pressurizes the interior of the tank. However, these tankers are not built to handle such pressure. With nowhere else to escape, the foam eventually forces its way out through the top of the tank, erupting like a sticky black volcano. As you can probably guess, this hot bitumen foam poses a serious risk to anyone nearby. Fortunately, in the incidents captured on video, it appears that everyone knew to keep a safe distance until the dangerous event had concluded. The Balenciaga Shipyard is a venerable shipbuilding facility located in northern Spain with a century of history behind it. Starting in 1921, it originally focused on constructing small wooden ships. Nowadays, it has evolved to producing large, ocean-going vessels. On July 18, 2022, a large audience assembled to witness the launch of Balenciaga's newest ship, the Edeguelo. This vessel was designed as a service operation ship intended to support an offshore wind farm in France. However, the event didn't go entirely as planned, and Balenciaga couldn't consider the launch an outright success. Hostia. The launch was going smoothly until an unexpected issue occurred with a rope that was meant to detach as the ship moved away from the dock. It seems it got snagged on an object instead of releasing. The reaction of the onlookers made it clear this was not part of the plan. Fortunately, no one was in the path of the rope when it suddenly broke free, shooting off with great force and noise, which was alarming to witness. Container ships are huge, and navigating them demands highly skilled captains. Despite this, errors occur, and accidents can happen. In June of 2021, a container ship called the OOCL Durban was making its way to Pier 66 at the port of Gauchamp. But as it was passing Pier 70, it ran into the front of another vessel, the young Lenka, which was moored at the dock. The impact of this collision was strong enough to hit a crane, leading to the crane collapsing. Authorities quickly confirmed that two workers were trapped due to the incident, but both were fortunately rescued without any serious injuries. They even noted that one of the individuals only sustained a minor scratch on his arm. As for the cause of the collision, after the accident, it was reported that the crew had noticed the ship veering too close and had sent a warning to alter its path. Moreover, officials have largely attributed the blame to the OOCL Durban, Although the exact cause remains uncertain, speculation suggests it could have been due to an engine malfunction, a strong current, or a combination of both factors. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt in the incident. Companies today are looking for employees who can creatively solve problems and are dependable in enhancing efficiency and achieving outcomes. However, it appears the hiring process for these forklift operators 
might have missed a step in verifying their past work experience. The details of when and where this forklift mishap happened are unclear, but it's definitely one for the history books. The task seemed straightforward. Use the equipment available, which included a large forklift and a smaller one, and with minimal oversight, load a very heavy appliance through a second story window. What stands out in this video of the double lift is that, against all odds, their method was initially successful, at least for a while. Determining whether it was the load or the forklift arms that made contact with the building is challenging. Just moments away from successfully completing the task, the smaller lift started to tilt, quickly turning a moment of triumph into one of dismay. Fortunately, there were no injuries reported. It's believed that the operator who was elevated managed to descend safely. Typically, when you look up double forklift, you'd expect to find a single machine equipped with two lifts positioned side by side, not two forklifts stacked one on top of the other. However, this incident certainly put a unique spin on the term double forklift. Perhaps in the future, a crane might be considered a safer choice for such tasks. The Danube River, often celebrated as the Queen of Europe's rivers, is the continent's second longest river, flowing through 10 countries and historically serving as an essential corridor for trade. On April 8, 2021, a significant incident occurred during dredging operations near Smederevo, Serbia, which was captured on CCTV. A barge, designed to carry dredged material, catastrophically failed under the strain, breaking in half. As the barge started sinking, a worker appeared on camera, desperately running and seeking a safe spot to jump from the doomed vessel. He waited until the barge drifted closer to the shore before jumping to safety, fortunately escaping without injury. The barge and the dredging equipment were owned by the DMB shipping company from Ruma. Following the incident, emergency services and investigators quickly arrived on the scene to evaluate the situation and determine the cause, which, based on the video evidence, appeared to be due to the barge being overloaded. This alarming event highlights the potential hazards workers face in high-risk industries and underscores the critical importance of adhering to safety standards and protocols. Have you experienced a roller coaster ride before? If so, you're familiar with the rush you feel during a steep drop. Feel free to think what you want, but viewing this video gave us the same kind of thrill and nervous excitement. Check it out yourself. It was all caused by strong winds. Fortunately, there were no injuries from this incident. Watching your efforts fall apart is devastating. The true test, however, is finding the strength to begin again. In an unfortunate incident, a team of builders in India was constructing a large steel structure when they detected a problem. A small error resulted in a disastrous chain reaction. It appears that the wall nearest to the camera couldn't withstand the pressure. The arches resting on it gradually forced it outwards until it collapsed. Fortunately, the workers noticed the issue in time and managed to get to safety. Given the structure's size, it's likely they had dedicated weeks, if not months, to its construction. Now they face the daunting task of clearing the debris and starting from scratch. For many, the sight of rolling green hills dotted with wind turbines is quite appealing, symbolizing clean energy and progress. However, some view these turbines as a blight on the landscape. Regardless of personal opinions on their aesthetics, one sight everyone can agree is undesirable is a wind turbine caught in flames. A person walking nearby witnessed such an incident, coming across a turbine ablaze. Though they didn't catch the initial ignition, they managed to record the fierce and destructive nature of the fire as it consumed the structure. Lightning strikes, 
stand as the primary reason behind wind turbine fires, yet in instances where there isn't a storm cloud visible, the cause often shifts towards electrical malfunctions or human error. Firetrace International, experts in fire suppression systems, points out that wind turbines become more susceptible to fires as they age. The deterioration of electrical components and wiring over time can lead to malfunctions. Additionally, the environment in which a turbine operates can influence its longevity. Those located in warmer and drier climates tend to wear out more rapidly. The financial impact of a turbine fire is significant, with the average incident resulting in total losses ranging from seven to eight million dollars underscoring the importance of maintenance and monitoring, especially for older turbines. This scenario might not initially appear to be a precursor to a crane accident, but it's a prime example of how appearances can be deceiving. It represents the calm before a sudden and catastrophic event. The individuals in proximity to the crane are unknowingly moments away from experiencing a situation that could easily be described as their worst nightmare. As the event unfolds, the distinctive noise that follows is a stark testament to the scale of destruction that can occur in such incidents, highlighting the critical importance of safety and vigilance in and around construction sites. Mobile, Alabama, stands as the state's second largest city, located on the Gulf of Mexico. It's home to Alabama's only saltwater port, making the Port of Mobile a crucial element in the city's economic well-being. Originally established as a trading hub between the French and Native Americans, it has grown to become the 12th largest port in the United States. In 2013, BAE Systems, a ship repair company operating within the port, faced a decline in business that led to downsizing and eventual closure. During their operation, a remarkable event was captured by one of their workers. A Carnival cruise ship became untethered during a storm and was set adrift, heading straight towards their location. Oh! Oh! Kissing it! Kissing it! Oh! Connection, baby! Holy moly! It damn show did, son. Carnival Cruise Lines explained that the ship got loose because of very strong winds. The National Weather Service noted that the winds hit speeds up to 66 miles per hour near the mobile ship repair yards. The cruise ship was in the middle of being fixed when it got away. Initially, fixing the ship was supposed to cost about $5 million, but after the ship hit something because it was loose, fixing it could now cost two to three times more than that. Antwerp, Belgium's biggest city, has a population of around 536,000. It's also home to the port of Antwerp, one of the world's busiest shipping ports. Ships leave the port via the Scheldt River to reach the North Sea before heading to their global destinations. Similarly, vessels entering the port follow this route. On December 9, 2019, a huge container ship from Mexico City arrived at the port of Vosland, which is part of Antwerp's larger port area. The ship was docked and the crew was waiting for further instructions when suddenly the wind began to blow strongly. This gust of wind caused the container ship to break free from its moorings. Everyone could only watch helplessly as the ship drifted towards the dock and a large loading crane. Reports indicate that winds were gusting at over 46 miles per hour, turning the massive container ship into something akin to a giant steel sail. The force of the wind was enough to tear the ship from its moorings. Local authorities quickly mobilized to mitigate the situation, deploying tugboats and other vessels in an effort to avert a disaster. 
Fortunately, there were no injuries reported when the crane ultimately gave way and collapsed. The Coast Guard responded promptly, securing the ship to ensure it wouldn't drift again. Although the ship only sustained minor damage, it required repairs before it could resume its journey. The incident left a significant mess on the dock that needed to be addressed. The port of Antwerp, ranking as the second busiest port in Europe after Rotterdam, faced a considerable setback. The effort to clear the debris and get the port operational again took several days, highlighting the impact such accidents can have on critical maritime infrastructure. Fort Huachuca is a military base located in southeastern Arizona, roughly 15 miles from the border with Mexico. Established in 1877, it continues to operate today, housing over 24,000 people, including active duty soldiers, their families, and civilian employees. In 2011, the fort invested $2.8 million in a wind turbine to provide power to more than 300 homes on the base marking a step towards self-sufficiency in energy production. After serving for seven years, the decision was made to take down the turbine through a controlled demolition. However, due to restrictions on using explosives within the base, the demolition team had to resort to cutting the turbine down, much like felling a tree. This involved making precise cuts through steel that was one inch thick, preparing the structure for a final decisive push to bring it down. The strategy involves cutting the tower up to what's termed the hinge point, a concept explained by safety officer Todd Kimball as the critical balance point. At this stage, the tower is still stable enough to stand independently, yet it's poised such that a calculated amount of force could bring it down. After preparing the hinge point, the team applies tension to a cable attached to the tower. A final, precise cut then initiates the controlled collapse of the tower. The objective is to ensure the turbine topples in a predetermined direction avoiding power lines on one side and underground utilities on the other. The arid and hot conditions of southern Arizona also play a significant role in the decision-making process. Even a minor spark could ignite a wildfire in such an environment, further justifying the decision to avoid explosives for the demolition. Aarhus, Denmark's second largest city, is not only among the oldest cities in the country, tracing back to the Viking era, but it's also a modern community of approximately 280,000 residents. In 2013, Aarhus distinguished itself by becoming the world's first local authority to generate 25% of its energy from wind power, marking a significant achievement in sustainable energy use. However, Reaching this milestone of 25% wind energy generation was not without its challenges. On February 22, 2008, a powerful storm swept through the surrounding countryside, putting the city's wind turbines to the test. One turbine outside Aarhus was unable to withstand the severe wind conditions, resulting in a dramatic incident that was captured on video, showcasing the challenges of harnessing wind power. Reports indicated that the turbine's catastrophic failure was triggered when one of its blades bent backward and struck the tower, leading to an explosion. Fragments of fiberglass were scattered, landing as far as 1,600 feet from the site of the incident. Just two days after this event, a similar incident occurred with another turbine in a town close by. This second turbine, already a decade old, was expected to have a longer operational life. Such incidents underscore the challenges and unpredictabilities involved in managing aging infrastructure in renewable energy sources like wind power. The Ormond Wind Farm, spanning 3.4 square miles in the Irish Sea, began construction in 2010, situated approximately six miles from the UK coastline. By 2012, the project was completed and the wind farm became fully operational. For almost 10 years, operations proceeded smoothly without significant incidents. However, in 2021, a mishap occurred. On October 23, 2021, a team from Vattenfall, a Swedish energy company, was conducting routine maintenance on the farm. They employed a robust crane system to inspect the wind turbine's large blades closely. It was during this maintenance work that tragedy struck.
Picture having to inform your boss about such a severe mishap. It appears that during the operation, one of the turbine's blades broke off and fell into the sea, leading to the turbine quickly sinking. Locals near Barrow, a port town in Cumbria County, started discovering debris from the turbine along the shoreline. Crane Hub, a dedicated website for crane-related news, reported that the accident was due to a failure in one of the lifting gears, which resulted in the turbine's fall. Fortunately, there were no injuries when the turbine plunged into the water. An ancient water tower once stood in Kolmina, a modest village nestled within the Tavero region of Russia. The choice of demolition crew for its dismantling now seems questionable in hindsight, perhaps indicating that a more thorough evaluation of their credentials and experience was necessary before entrusting them with the task. One can only hope that the owner of the truck involved had good insurance coverage specifically for water tower incidents. Following the unfortunate event, a separate team was dispatched to clear away the debris. For those curious about the aftermath, the van ended up being completely crushed, resembling a pancake in its final form. A team of workers from Norway accidentally submerged their shipping crane while conducting a load test. Sapum, an Italian firm, produces large cranes used for oil drilling, which require thorough testing before being deployed at sea. The Sapum 7000, operational since 1987, was undergoing standard load testing near Norway's coast on April 14, 2022. This incident nearly resulted in the loss of the entire vessel, valued at $400 million. And then you go, perché quando è andato giù e quando è andata la frizione non si sono rotti i cavi vedi, dopo. Vedi, vedi i cavi? Non è una questione soltanto di bettolina. Prima che la bettolina arrivasse tutta, i cavi erano già arrivati pure su, è mollato proprio in libera completamente, proprio mollato tutto. Con i freni non ha retto neanche un cazzo. No, niente. hai visto il fumo? Oh, hai visto il fumo? Il fumo. The company mentioned that the crane had successfully completed multiple trials and was undergoing its scheduled five-year load test. Unfortunately, one of the primary cables snapped, leading the whole vessel to tilt to one side and its load to fall into the water. This incident seemed like an inevitable mishap. On December 21, 2011, in the middle of the ocean, a crew was assigned the job of hoisting a small tugboat from the water to place it on a barge. Based on the language and accents, it appears the crew was Russian. However, their demeanor suggested an impending disaster. They seemed too relaxed for people engaged in lifting a boat weighing several tons from the water. Therefore, it wasn't shocking when the situation took a turn for the worst. <laughs> Ебать копать! Зафиксируйте, блядь! Машину заводим, да? Пробили танки, ё... Где танки, блядь? Upon a closer look, it's evident that the boat was highly unstable as the crane shifted it towards the barge. An object tumbled off and rolled across the deck of the tugboat. Could that have been the final straw? The cables then gave way, causing the boat to hit the deck and then fall into the water. The Russian cameraman reacted with a gasp, repeating a phrase twice that likely wasn't very optimistic. As for their purpose out there, it's hard to pin down, maybe a search and rescue operation or a transportation task. Regardless, there was definitely some explaining to do back on land, especially with one less tugboat. The Sufid mill in South Dakota became a classic example of a demolition gone wrong on December 3, 2005. Despite setting off explosives to bring the building down, it stubbornly refused to collapse, standing strong and unwavering. Adding to the humor of the situation, a banner with boom, written in large letters, was draped on the building's side, contrasting the failed demolition attempt. In a video capturing this event, a man's voice can be heard suggesting, perhaps out of frustration or jest, that they should simply push the building over. While the Carnival Triumph cruise ship was docked in Mobile, Alabama, awaiting repairs, 
an unexpected incident caught the attention of onlookers on shore. A video captured the moment the cruise ship slowly collided with another ship identified as belonging to the U.S. Army. After the collision, the two vessels separated and the extent of the damage was evaluated. The Carnival Triumph suffered a significant breach in its hull, with a gash approximately 20 feet long. Additionally, there were reports of damaged railings and harm to the stern above the waterline. On October 24, 2017, in Chiang Mai, Thailand, a lot of rain caused the Mima River to rise a lot. The strong water flow brought along trees and bamboo, which ended up piling up against a bridge. This pile of debris kept building up and put so much pressure on the bridge that it eventually broke and fell down. The person who recorded the video, Bunzi Sabima, who is 62 years old, had been using that bridge his whole life. He clearly remembers when it was built in 1986. The pile of trees and other stuff that had gathered acted like a temporary dam next to the bridge. The water wanted to keep moving downstream, putting a lot of pressure on the bridge. After holding up against this pressure for a few minutes, the bridge finally broke in half. In May 2014, Central and Southeastern Europe were hit hard by floods especially in Serbia and Bosnia. Northern Bosnia was the worst affected. In Zavidovici, over 7,000 people had to seek refuge because the Bosna River overflowed, causing a lot of damage. The floodwaters were so powerful that they ripped a steel footbridge right out of its foundations. This bridge used to link the two parts of the town together. It has since been rebuilt. Also, the floods destroyed six other bridges over different rivers. The area was hit by landslides too, caused by days of heavy rain. When the disaster was over, the streets were filled with mud, broken wood, and other kinds of debris. Hangzhou, a city in Zhejiang province, near the start of Hangzhou Bay, between Shanghai and Ningbo, has grown into a big economic hub in China. On May 18, 2019, there was an event where a truck tried to go under a footbridge that wasn't very high. Unfortunately, the driver of the truck misjudged how much space there was, and the back of the truck ended up just touching the bridge. The collision caused the bridge to fall down, almost hitting a white car that was driving underneath. Luckily, the driver of the white car quickly sped up and got away before the bridge could land on the car. Reports from the area indicate that the stuff on the truck was loaded higher than allowed. The driver was arrested, but it might not be completely his fault. It's possible he thought the truck could fit under the bridge without any problems, which brings up questions about how the truck was loaded. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. Check out the video where the cruise ship MCS Armonia hits the dock in Honduras. While it may look like the captain made a mistake, he was actually cleared of any wrongdoing. The crash was attributed to a mechanical issue. This footage comes from China, dated February 16, 2017. A severe storm hit, bringing powerful winds that devastated Shuangyashan city.
Reports from local news say that the now roofless building used to be a bank in downtown Shuangyashan. It's not clear if the roof was torn off because of the strong winds or if the roof itself was weak. Thankfully, no one was under the roof when it fell. The damage was mostly minor, affecting streetlights and electrical cables, so the overall effect was not too severe. The video, taken on August 9, 2021, at the port of Shanghai, shows a dramatic event where a cargo ship, out of control, crashes into the dock. <laughs> This incident might be seen as the biggest blunder in the port's history. It's probable that the ship's crew signaled their inability to steer the ship properly as it alarmingly approached the pier. It slowly moved toward and eventually hit the pier, causing the entire structure to collapse into the water. Remarkably, there were no injuries reported from this incident. On July 19, 2009, near the coast of British Columbia, a tugboat flipped over while it was turning. You can see the boat turning upside down in the water, with its bottom facing upwards and the propellers still spinning. Incredibly, all four people on the boat made it out alive. This event occurred in New Zealand a country divided into two main islands, the North Island, known for its dense population, and the South Island, famous for the stunning Southern Alps. State Highway 6 starts at the northeastern tip of the South Island and stretches 722 miles to the southern end. Along this route, the highway crosses the Waiho River, which is fed by meltwater from nearby glaciers. In March 2016, due to heavy rainfall and snowmelt, the river swelled to dangerous levels with a much stronger current than normal. This unusual situation put a lot of stress on several bridges over the river, leading to a significant and abrupt collapse. Even though fog made it a bit hard to see, the part of the bridge closest to the camera had already collapsed by the time recording started. Slowly, this broken part of the bridge moved closer to the water, eventually getting partly underwater. The strong currents put a lot of stress on the bridge's steel framework. In the end, the whole bridge couldn't withstand the pressure and was carried away downstream as a pile of wreckage. Mayor Bruce Smith announced a state of emergency, describing the heavy rain as a once-in-a-century event. Thanks to quick work by contractors and government bodies, the bridge was up and running again after just 18 days. Dump trucks operate with hydraulic rams near the front and a hinge at the back. This incident highlights the consequences of overloading these rams. Initially, everything looks normal as the driver gets into the cab, but the load he's attempting to lift is excessively heavy. When the bed is fully raised, the rams fail at the base, leading to the bed slamming back down. This causes the truck to jolt violently. It's a stark reminder of the importance of checking the hydraulic system before attempting to lift heavy loads. 
On November 14, 2022, in China, some people started worrying when they noticed cracks developing in a building's walls. They quickly left the building and started filming from a safe distance outside. <laughs> Local reports indicate that the building fell down right after the last person got out, sending a huge cloud of dust and debris into the air. Amazingly, nobody was hurt. Photos taken later from in front of the building show it was badly damaged. The exact reason for the sudden collapse is still unclear, as local officials have been looking into it but haven't shared any findings. Arts Pedregal, a luxury shopping center in Mexico City that opened in 2018, was built for the city's affluent, featuring high-end boutiques. However, its grandeur was marred on July 12, 2018, when a part of the mall collapsed during a severe rainstorm, which had been affecting Mexico City for days. This tragic event deeply affected the local community. The collapse was blamed on several factors. Flaws in the mall's design and construction became apparent as it failed to cope with the heavy rain. Its hillside location worsened the situation, with the soaked ground putting extra pressure on the foundation. Furthermore, issues with the drainage system and water management significantly contributed to the catastrophe. A video of the collapse showed a huge part of the rooftop parking falling in, sending debris onto cars below and damaging the mall's lower levels. Fortunately, no one was hurt thanks to quick evacuation efforts and fortunate timing. On September 24, 2022, in Zhongshan, China, drivers experienced a terrifying moment captured by a dash cam as they were crossing a bridge. Construction was underway for a new overpass meant to connect parts of the highway, but as one driver, whose dash cam was recording, neared the bridge, the entire structure suddenly gave way. Luckily, this driver was far enough back to avoid getting caught in the collapse. Tragically, a truck under the bridge wasn't as lucky. A steel box girder from the bridge fell and landed on the road, slicing the truck in half. Remarkably, the truck driver managed to survive this frightening incident. On March 28, 2021, a major event took place on the Dwarka Expressway, a new eight-lane highway being built in northern India that stretches for 17 miles, designed to connect Dwarka's industrial area to a toll plaza outside New Delhi. Despite its promising development, the construction faced repeated setbacks due to accidents. On this particular day, a bridge section weighing 262 tons suddenly fell. Luckily, the workers nearby weren't seriously hurt. Interestingly, a few goats were seen near the site, seemingly unaware of the danger. The construction site was relatively quiet that day, with not many people around. Without warning, a part of the bridge on the left side gave way, leading to the whole structure collapsing, shocking those in the vicinity. A small vehicle happened to pass by at the moment of the collapse, engulfed in a dust cloud. Workers called for stricter safety measures, voicing concerns that the rush to meet deadlines might be compromising their well-being. Initially expected to be completed in 2012, the project has been delayed by various accidents and disputes over land. Some workers believe that their employers prioritize meeting project deadlines over safety protocols. On January 2, 2016, a village in Brazil experienced a dramatic cascade of events when their local bridge, known as the Cemetery Bridge, started to collapse in a domino-like effect. A seemingly small trigger caused one section of the bridge to fall, which then knocked down the next section's support, leading to a sequential collapse. The initial cause of the bridge's failure is still uncertain, but it's believed that long-term erosion and lack of proper upkeep played significant roles. Despite its apparent inadequacy for vehicle use, the bridge was frequently crossed by many people whose collective weight might have hastened its downfall. The maritime shipping sector, responsible for moving about 80% of the world's goods, has seen its cargo volumes swell from 100 million tons in 1980 to over 2 billion tons in recent times. This surge underscores the industry's growth, but also highlights the increased risk of operational mishaps. One such incident occurred on March 18, 2012, when a forklift at a port tried to carry out a risky move with a hanging container. 
the forklift tipped over because the container's weight was not properly distributed and the ground was uneven. This event underscores the importance of strictly following safety guidelines in handling cargo. Fortunately, the forklift driver in this 2012 case was not injured, showing that serious accidents can have non-fatal outcomes when luck is on one side. On August 1, 2008, the Interstate 35 West Mississippi River Bridge, which had been a crucial transport route since its completion in 1967, catastrophically collapsed into the Mississippi River around 6.05 p.m. This event disrupted the daily routines of thousands of commuters. The collapse, captured on nearby CCTV during peak traffic hours, was preceded by loud noises and noticeable shaking. Investigations later pinpointed a critical design mistake as the cause. The gusset plates, which helped hold the bridge together, were not thick enough. The relentless pressure from years of heavy traffic ultimately led to the failure of these crucial components. Footage from the U.S. Navy highlighted the vast extent of the damage. The collapse resulted in the tragic loss of 13 lives and left 145 people injured, devastating many families. In the wake of this disaster, Minneapolis had the daunting challenge of rebuilding. This incident served as a crucial alert for bridge inspectors and engineers across the country, leading to intensified efforts to guarantee the safety and dependability of the numerous bridges used by millions of people daily. In Georgetown, Malaysia, the 45-year-old Waki Bridge was a key pedestrian link over the highway, closely tied to the city's rhythm and routine. Yet, its existence came to a sudden halt in 2020. On February 5th, a turning point occurred when a truck carrying a crane underestimated the bridge's height clearance. The truck made it under, but the crane did not, striking the bridge in a dramatic clash. The incident appeared ordinary at first as the truck neared, but the crane caught unexpectedly, halting the truck abruptly and nearly causing the bridge to fall. Luckily, no one was on the bridge at the time, avoiding injuries. The damage was beyond fix, presenting city officials with a tough call. Fixing the bridge would mean closing Waki Road, a crucial route that couldn't be blocked. Thus, the decision was quickly made to tear down the bridge within a day of the incident, with the trucking company footing the demolition bill. Annually, inflating tires results in serious injuries for many people, often occurring without any warning. You might not realize you're filling the tire too much, and then suddenly, it explodes. AAA points out that the primary issue is the deterioration from driving on tires that aren't properly inflated. This wear and tear weakens the tire, so if you overinflate it by mistake, the weakened structure could lead to an explosion. A case in point happened to a repair shop employee on April 15, 2014. The video shows him simply inflating a tire, a task that's supposed to be straightforward. However, disaster strikes when the tire bursts, knocking him to the ground amidst flying debris, with the tire itself almost hitting his leg. Miraculously, he stands and walks away from the incident, albeit with his right arm in considerable pain. In 1998, a distinctive steel single arch bridge was built over the Nanfang fishing port in Taiwan, designed to facilitate the passage of fishing boats without interrupting traffic. This bridge was a replacement for an older structure and became a crucial infrastructure for the area. However, on October 1, 2019, the bridge catastrophically failed, resulting in injuries to more than 20 people, mostly those on fishing vessels beneath it. At the time of the collapse, six individuals were on the bridge, including a driver in an oil tanker truck which exploded during the incident. Astonishingly, everyone on the bridge managed to survive. Subsequent investigations into the collapse revealed serious issues. The bridge had been largely neglected, with minimal inspections conducted over the 21 years since its completion. These inspections, had they been performed adequately, 
would have identified severe corrosion, with the bridge's supporting steel cables having deteriorated to just 22 to 27 percent of their original strength by the time of the collapse. This tragedy underscored the critical need for regular and thorough maintenance to ensure structural integrity. On January 13, 2012, the Costa Concordia, an Italian cruise ship, suffered a disastrous fate during its voyage. Under the direction of its captain, the ship sailed too close to Giglio Island and collided with an unseen submerged object, causing it to list and partially sink near the island. The event led to a six-hour-long rescue operation, but sadly, 33 lives were lost. Investigations after the incident attributed the disaster to human error, focusing on Captain Francesco Chitino's severe miscalculation and his premature abandonment of the ship, leaving passengers and crew behind. Schettino was later sentenced to 16 years in jail for manslaughter, marking a stark conclusion to this tragic event. Despite the significant loss and damage, Costa Cruises, the ship's operating company, did not face any legal penalties. In an auto body shop in China, employees were handling a big truck tire when an unexpected blowout caused one of the workers to be thrown into the air. Watching it again in slow motion really highlights how fortunate the worker was that the tire didn't burst when his face was very close to it. It's astonishing to see the distance the tire covers after the explosion. The danger isn't just from the explosion itself, but also from the possibility of being hit by the flying tire. A good piece of advice is to always monitor your tire's air pressure, avoid driving on tires that are not fully inflated, and thoroughly check the tire before inflating it. These precautions could be life-saving. In Las Vegas, where change is a constant, Demolitions are as routine as new constructions. The Clarion Casino Hotel, a 12-story building, was prepped with 4,400 pounds of explosives for an early morning demolition. True to Vegas style, the event was turned into a spectacle with Frank Sinatra music, playing before the implosion and Vegas showgirls leading the final countdown. Watching the demolition was immensely satisfying. The building was successfully brought down in a massive explosion, leaving only the elevator shaft standing, which was pretty impressive. Imagine the ultra-rich zipping across the globe in their luxurious, diamond-encrusted mega-yachts, living the dream. But picture this, your $10 million yacht doesn't even make it into the water during its launch. That's exactly what happened when the 90-foot yacht named Baden was being launched in Washington State, costing a cool $10 million. You'd at least expect your yacht to float properly. The yacht builders, New World Yachts, pointed fingers at the launch equipment, not themselves, for the mishap. Following the incident, they laid off 52 workers and closed their doors for good. The launch wasn't totally without drama. Six people were on board during the failed launch, but thankfully, everyone was rescued without serious injury. In the small town of Elk Mountain, Wyoming, located in Carbon County, an incident occurred on February 11, 2017, involving three Wyoming state troopers. They had arrived to assist drivers involved in a crash on a particularly windy day, making conditions on the highway precarious. While they were addressing the situation, a semi-truck was making its way down Interstate 80. As it neared the patrol cars, a fierce gust of wind, recorded at speeds up to 90 miles per hour by local weather reports, struck the side of the semi-truck. This unexpected force caused a dramatic scene. The semi-truck was pushed off course and ended up crashing into one of the police cruisers, crushing it significantly. Remarkably, no one was inside the cruiser at the time of impact, and both the truck's driver and passenger emerged without serious injuries. However, they were issued a traffic citation for operating a high-profile vehicle during a time when the highway was explicitly closed to such vehicles due to the stormy conditions. On October 15, 2003, the MV Andrew J. Barbie, a ferry filled with commuters heading to Staten Island from Manhattan, experienced a tragic accident. Normally, as a ship approaches the shore, it's standard procedure to slow down. However, this ferry continued at its pace right into the pier because the assistant pilot had dozed off and the ship's master was not paying attention. 
the impact was severe, especially with 6,000 passengers on board, leading to significant injuries and, sadly, the loss of 11 lives when the pier tore through the passenger deck. The ferry was named after Andrew J. Barbe, a celebrated coach from Curtis High School who had passed away shortly before the vessel was commissioned. Despite the honor of having a ship named after him, it appears the MV Andrew J. Barbie was plagued by misfortune, crashing once again in 2010. This later incident also resulted in numerous injuries, but thankfully, no fatalities. When a demolition doesn't go as planned, it can be a letdown. However, there's something intriguing about a building that collapses in an unexpected yet orderly manner, even if part of it remains upright. This was the case with an 11-story office building in Dallas, Texas, intended for a controlled demolition. The process seemed successful at first, with the external structure collapsing as intended. Yet the central part, which housed the elevators and stairwell, remained stubbornly in place, albeit at a slight angle, for the entire following week. This unusual sight turned into a bit of a local attraction, drawing crowds eager to snap a unique photo for social media, likely paired with witty captions. The spectacle of Dallas's own leaning tower provided unexpected entertainment. Ultimately, it required the traditional force of a wrecking ball and a dedicated demolition team to tackle the structure from the top down, leading to its eventual collapse. Here, we see a ship smashed against the lock gate, definitely not where it should be. The gate looks pretty beaten up and might need serious fixing. This mishap occurred on the Kiel Canal in Germany, a 61-mile-long freshwater canal in Schleswig-Holstein. It's handy because it saves ships from having to navigate around Denmark, where the waters can get rough. Back in June 20th, 1895, Kaiser Wilhelm officially opened the canal, an event filmed by British director Bert Akers. The first ship to pass through was the Lily, a wooden bark from Sunderland, and it went much smoother than the Acacia's ordeal. The canal gained notoriety in 1936 when Hitler closed it to international shipping, causing tension that eventually led Britain to declare war on Germany in 1939. During the decade following the financial crisis and the auto industry's decline in Detroit, the aging football stadium, once a symbol of the city's glory, became a testament to its struggles. In 2017, the iconic Pontiac Silverdome faced its demolition date. The stadium, rigged with explosives, awaited its collapse signal. But when the demolition team triggered the detonator, the result was far from spectacular. Nothing happened as intended. The planned series of explosions meant to bring down the top section merely resulted in a lackluster pyrotechnic display, followed by silence. It was a letdown, especially for those eagerly awaiting the destruction. In the end, it amounted to nothing more than a disappointment. A planned demolition of six old tower blocks in Glasgow turned into a mess when two of the towers remained mostly intact. This unexpected outcome created a major headache for the local council, especially with an irritated crowd of Glaswegians on their hands. Never a pleasant situation. Once a demolition starts, even partially, it's tricky to backtrack and fix it when things go awry. The building could be unstable, and there's a risk of further collapse. I certainly wouldn't want to be the one inspecting it up close, would you? There's certainly something amusing about a serious attempt to blow something up ending in utter failure. Take the case of the Broadway Bridge, condemned due to structural issues, yet stubbornly refusing to collapse into the river despite explosives being detonated. Stretching between Little Rock and North Little Rock in Arkansas for 93 years, it seemed this bridge wasn't going down without a fight, or at least a dignified protest. The Arkansas Highway Department spokesperson admitted they thought they had weakened the bridge enough, but it turned out they'd have to resort to mechanical means to dismantle it in the end. In the Canadian province of New Brunswick, the old power plant provided a classic case of things not going as planned. Despite all indications suggesting a successful demolition, the structure simply refused to collapse as expected. Initially, the explosion seemed quite impressive, with booming sounds, smoke, and signs of collapsing. However, once the dust settled, the outcome was rather underwhelming. While part of the main building did collapse, a significant portion remained standing. It detonated around the lower part but somehow fell symmetrically, ending up six or seven feet shorter but sitting uniformly in place. In China, there's a surge in construction projects, including cruise liners. 
one such ship, the Pearl No. 7, embarked on its maiden voyage from Wanzhou in Zhejiang Province's east. This ship, measuring 530 feet long and seven stories high, sailed along the Ujong River under the Wenzhou Bridge. However, its height proved problematic as its chimneys collided with the bridge, causing damage and abrasions. Authorities launched an investigation into the incident, attributing the damage to elevated river levels caused by heavy rainfall in the preceding days. Tamil Nadu, the southernmost state in India, is steeped in ancient Indian history. The Tamil language, one of the oldest surviving classical languages, is still widely spoken. While Tamil Nadu cherishes its linguistic traditions, it's also eager to embrace new technology like wind energy. In 2009, large wind turbines started appearing in the region. Today, India ranks among the top wind energy producers globally. However, these turbines sometimes face issues. On December 28, 2019, locals witnessed one of them fail dramatically. Right from the beginning, it was clear that something was amiss. The twisted metal at the turbine's peak hinted at trouble. With each rotation, the distortion worsened until it finally snapped off altogether. In the middle of August 2021, Bozkurt, a small town near the Black Sea in Turkey, was hit by its most severe flash flooding in recent memory. The town, with a population of around 5,500, is situated near the Easiness Stream and is a few miles away from the Black Sea. This flood in Turkey came as the latest disaster in a summer already packed with challenges, including heat waves in Italy and Russia, additional flooding in Belgium and Germany, and the ongoing global pandemic disrupting plans worldwide. Some areas in Turkey reported receiving 16 inches of rain within 48 hours, while in some places, rain fell at a rate of 5 inches per hour. Bozkurt's location downstream from the Quet Mountains exacerbated the situation, as water flowed through a logging area south of the town, blocking the stream and causing overflow. Video footage shows the extent of the damage and why Bozkurt was particularly hard hit by the storm. <laughs> Gidiyor. Ha 
Allah'ım sen yardım et. Kimseyi bırakma orada insanları koru. Ah gitti burası da gitti. Ay tövbe estağfurullah. Çok kötü. The water rapidly surged over the banks of the EZ stream, causing water levels to rise by 13 feet in areas around Bozkurt. This led to cars being swept away, and many people with homes and businesses on the ground floor faced total losses. The mayor of Bozkurt described the town as being devastated in an indescribable manner. The flooding resulted in 300 villages losing electricity, with vehicles upended in the streets and thick layers of mud covering most of the ground-level areas. The Mirandi Bridge, a motorway overpass, has been completely demolished following a tragic collapse in 2019. A structural component of the bridge gave way, crashing down onto a warehouse and railway line, resulting in nearly 50 fatalities. To mitigate further risks, the decision was made to demolish the remaining portions of the bridge using controlled explosives. Thousands of people were evacuated, as explosives were carefully placed on various sections of the bridge. Concerns about the bridge's integrity had been raised for decades but weren't addressed adequately. Once detonated, the explosion brought down the bridge in a mere eight seconds. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one, and if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. This large abandoned building in Turkey, once a flower factory, had been in a state of neglect for many years. It became the target for a controlled explosion to demolish it and clear the site. However, during the explosions, an unexpected event took place. Instead of collapsing, the building remained intact but unexpectedly tilted over, rolling onto its side, then onto its roof, before finally resting against a wall just a short distance from a nearby residential building. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.